Hey there, I am Marok Said, a microbiologist and a science educator. Science is my passion and I'm here to share it with you. Advanced microbiology topic on extremophiles. But before starting this video, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my videos. Let's start with the table of contents. First, we will have introduction which will include its history, discoveries and types of extremophiles. Then comes archaea, some principle of life which it requires. And we will look upon acidity and alkalinity, then salinity, water activity, temperature adaptations, pressure adaptations, radiation adaptations, and fundamental and applied relevance of extremophiles. Now let's begin with the introduction of this topic. Definition Extremophiles are microorganisms that strive in environments considered extreme by traditional standards. These environments can be characterized by extreme conditions such as high temperatures, acidity, alkalinity, salinity, pressure, or radiation. The history behind it The history of extremophiles dates back to 1964 when scientists Thomas Brock and Hudson Fries made a groundbreaking discovery at Yellowstone National Park. They observed distant color patterns at parks hot springs. These color patterns were a result of temperature gradients as hot water from the springs cooled away from its source. In these gradients, unique microbial colonies were thriving, even in scorching water with temperatures as high as 80 degrees Celsius. These microbial colonies puzzled scientists initially. They found proteins but not chlorophyll in these organisms, suggesting that they were bacteria rather than photosynthetic microorganisms. These heat-loving bacteria were named hyperthermophiles. Impact of Extremophiles The discovery of extremophiles revolutionized our understanding of the limits of life and how organisms can survive in extreme environments. Extremophiles challenged conventional ideas about where life could exist and how it could thrive. These microorganisms provided critical insight into how metabolism can adapt to strive in conditions that were once considered inhospitable. Discoveries Among the remarkable discoveries was Thermus aquaticus, an extremophile bacterium capable of surviving in temperatures ranging from 60 to 80 degrees Celsius. This discovery had significant implications particularly in molecular biology as Thermus aquaticus produces the heat-resistant enzyme tag polymerase used in the polymerase chain reaction. Extremophiles have been found in diverse and harsh environments, showcasing their incredible adaptability. These environments include very cold regions, psychrophiles, highly acidic conditions, acidophiles, Strongly alkaline environments, alkaliphiles, saline locations, halophiles, high pressure habitats, piezophiles or barophiles, places rich in heavy metals, metallophiles, and lastly, areas deprived of sunlight. Some extremophiles can adapt to multiple extreme conditions earning them the title of polyextremophiles. Types of extremophiles Extremophiles are organisms that require extreme conditions to grow and thrive. They have evolved specific adaptations that allow them not to just survive but flourish in environments that would be lethal to most life forms. Extremotolerant organisms, on the other hand, can tolerate extreme conditions but prefer or grow optimally in more moderate or normal conditions. Diversity Extremophiles exhibit a remarkable diversity spanning all three domains of life, bacteria, 
archaea and eukarya. This diversity includes not only single-celled microorganisms but also multicellular life forms like some fungus and certain protists. Among the extremophiles, archaea, a group of microorganisms distinct from bacteria and eukarya, are particularly prominent. Archaea have showcased remarkable adaptability to extreme conditions and have significantly expanded our understanding of microbial life on Earth. In Yellowstone caldera, Wyoming, you can observe golden brown bacterial mats located along the outer edge of two distinct pools in the upper glacier basin. These pools, known as chromatin beauty pools, have a central area with intensely hot water at approximately 199 degrees Fahrenheit, gradually cooling as you move away from the center. Around the peripheral of the pools, at temperatures as low as 163 degrees Fahrenheit, cyanobacteria thrive and give the water its distinct coloration. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to support by subscribing. Next, Archaea. Archaea constitute one of the three domains of life, alongside bacteria and eukarya. They are often referred to as ancient bacteria due to their evolutionary distinctiveness. Archaea are known for their ability to thrive in extreme environments. Some common extremophilic adaptation among archaea include hyperthermophily, living in extremely high temperatures, acidophily, thriving in highly acidic environments, alkylophily, favoring strongly alkaline conditions, and halophily, surviving in saline environments. An exceptional example of hyperthermophilic archaea is Methanopyrus clangrelli, which can grow at an astonishing temperature of 122 degrees Celsius. On the other extreme, Picrophilus toleris can thrive at a pH as low as 0.06, an acidity level comparable to concentrated sulfuric acid. Parameters that limit life Our understanding of life is primarily based on Earth-based examples but it is guided by universal principle of chemistry and physics. Life as we know, it typically requires three fundamental components. Number one, a liquid solvent. Water serves as a universal solvent for life on Earth. It provides a medium for biochemical reactions and is essential for transporting nutrients within cell. Number two, an energy source. Organisms need an energy source to drive metabolic processes. For most life on Earth, this energy comes from chemical reactions or in the case of plants of some microorganism from sunlight. Number 3. Building Blocks Life relies on a set of molecular building blocks, including carbon-based compounds like amino acids, nucleotides, lipids, and sugars. These molecules are used to constrict the complex structures and processes of living organisms. Extremophiles and their adaptations Extremophiles including archaea have evolved to make extreme conditions their metabolic norms. Rather than being anomalies, they are well adapted to their extreme habitats. These microorganisms often process specialized enzymes proteins and other molecular adaptations that enable them to survive and thrive in conditions that are hostile to most other life forms. These adaptations may include unique membrane structures, temperature-stable enzymes, thermoenzymes, and specific mechanism for maintaining pH balance or osmotic regulation. Additionally, there is increasing evidence to suggest that extremophiles, including polyextremophiles, adapted to multiple extreme conditions, may be more abundant on Earth than previously thought. Their capacity to inhibit such diverse and challenging environments underscores the adaptability and resilience of life, expanding the frontiers of our knowledge about the potential for life in the universe.
principles of life requires water water is regarded as the most likely liquid solvent for life due to its abundance in the cosmos and unique properties its molecular structure and polarity makes it an excellent medium for dissolving and transporting a wide range of molecules which is crucial for various biochemical reactions the availability of liquid water is key determinant of the habitable biosphere for life on earth water serves as a medium in which life processes occur and it plays a central role in shaping the emergence and evolution of life as a solvent water is indispensable for biochemical reactions and the formation of complex biomolecules its unique properties such as its ability to dissolve various solutes high heat capacity and surface tension are essential for life as we know for supporting this channel kindly subscribe source of energy life requires an energy source to sustain its processes Many life forms harness energy through redox chemistry involving the transfer of electrons from one molecule to another. Physico-chemical gradients including redox conditions are pivotal in life's origins and its diversity. These gradients are different in physical and chemical properties within an environment such as variation in temperature, pH or electron donor and acceptor concentrations. Redox and proton gradients are believed to have played a fundamental role in initiating the necessary energy flux for early metabolic processes. While we focus on extreme conditions like temperature, pH and pressure, the quest to understand life's limit goes beyond these factors and extend to energetic and nutrient limits. These limits are crucial for delving into the possibilities and construct of life's existence. Correlation of parameters Various environmental parameters are interconnected and can have significant effects on microbial diversity, energy availability, and nutrient cycling. Different environments exhibit specific influence parameters. For example, in geothermal waters, temperature may be a primary factor affecting microbial diversity. In soil communities, pH levels could exert a stronger influence while in saline lakes salinity might play a key role the interplay of temperature pH pressure salinity radiation and other parameters in different ecological niche shapes the adaptations and diversity of microbial life Understanding the complex correlations between these factors is essential for comprehending the dynamics of life in different environments. If this video is helpful, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Next, acidity and alkalinity. Extreme pH environments. Extreme pH values are often observed in various ecosystems, especially as a result of contamination from mining waste. Notable extremes include pH as low as minus 3.6 in locations like Iron Mountain, California, and highly alkaline conditions with a pH of 0.06 in places like Soda Lake, Corka, and Soap Lake, Washington. Adaptation mechanisms. Impact of pH on microorganisms. pH or the level of acidity or alkalinity significantly affects microorganisms at different scales from nano to macro level. Cytoplasmic pH regulation. All microorganisms must maintain a near neutral cytoplasmic pH for their survival and metabolism. Acidophilic bacteria typically have a cytoplasmic pH of around 6.0, while Alkaliphilic bacteria have a cytoplasmic pH ranging from 7.2 to 8.7. Proton hemostasis. To maintain pH homeostasis, microorganisms use various transporters including the ion utilizing ATP synthetase. It is believed that the regulation of protons and other ions was one of the earliest cellular functions to evolve in the history of life on earth. Chemiosis. Chemiosis, which involves the movement of ions across membranes, is a property shared by both archaeal and bacterial cells. This process helps create an electro 
chemical gradient that can be used to generate cellular energy. Microbial pH modification Microorganisms can modify their surrounding environment's pH through various mechanisms. They may exert organic metabolites such as lactic acid or acidic acid, which can alter the immediate pH in their vicinity. Many acidophiles also possesses organic acid degradation pathways that help prevent proton uncoupling by organic acids. Metabolic reactions and pH Microorganisms can significantly change the pH of the environment through metabolic reactions. For example, microorganisms involved in sulfur oxidation can excrete sulfate and protons as byproducts, which leads to significant acidification of their surroundings. This metabolic ability is harnessed in industrial processes such as bioleaching of sulfate ore deposits, which is largely responsible for low pH of acid mine, drainage fluids and other acidic environments. Microbial Community Impact Macroscale Effects At a macro scale, pH can play a dominant role in shaping the composition and abundance of microbial communities. Diversity Changes pH fluctuations can lead to significant shift in the diversity of microbial community in various environments. Distinct microbial communities Studies have revealed distinct microbial community at different pH levels. For instance, in environments with a pH range of 1.9 to 4.1, the genus Ferroverum tends to dominate at higher pH levels. At lower pH levels, one can find the phyla, alpha proteobacteria, gamma proteobacteria, nitrospiry, and uriarchida. Bacterial community composition. Changes in pH can result variation in bacterial community composition as observed in alkaline sediments. pH range of microbes. Most culture microbes exhibit a preference for a relatively narrow pH range, typically spanning about 3 to 4 pH units. Fungal isolates. Some exceptions exist, particularly among fungal isolates that thrive over a broader pH range. Archaeal and fungal reliance. It has been suggested that archaeal and fungal communities may be less affected by changes in pH compared to their bacterial counterparts. Next, salinity. Salinity measures the concentration of dissolved salts in water and significantly affects the composition and behavior of microbial communities. Saline environments on Earth vary widely in terms of salinity levels. For example, sea water typically has a salinity around 3 to 4 percent, while more extreme environments like hot springs can have salinity up to 10.5 percent. Soda lakes found in locations like Soap Lake, Washington, can reach salinity levels of up to 37.1 percent. In some cases, salt inclusions can lead to even higher salinity levels, reaching up to 49.7 percent. The salinity of these environments is determined by the presence of various ions such as sodium, chloride, sulfate, calcium, and magnesium, which contribute to the total salinity. In terrestrial saline environments, the ability of water is also influenced by the balance between precipitation and evaporation. When evaporation rate exceeds precipitation, salt becomes more concentrated, further increasing salinity. Salinity range Microorganisms have adopted to strive within a wide range of salinity levels from environments with no salinity to highly saline conditions. One remarkable example is Heller cinetibacter silvermani, a microorganism isolated from Sellers Lake, California, which can grow optimally at an extremely high salinity of 35% NaCl. Halophiles, which are organisms that thrive in high salinity environments, are found in all three domains of life – archaea, bacteria, and eukarya. Hyperhalophiles are a subgroup of halophiles that can grow at salinity levels of around 15% NaCl. Some microorganisms known as polyextremophiles, like Halomonas, Capilicellus, 
have the ability to tolerate not only high salinity but also extreme pH levels such as pH value up to 12, making them incredibly versatile. Adaptation Mechanisms Microorganisms adopted high salinity environments use specific strategies to maintain osmotic balance within their cells. There are two primarily strategies. Salt in strategy. In this strategy, microorganisms accumulate potassium ions in their cytoplasm. This helps to balance the high concentration of salts outside the cell. Salt exclusion strategy. Instead of accumulating salts, microorganisms using this strategy synthesize compatible organic solutes such as polyols, amino acids, sugars, and bentines. These organic solutes counterbalance the high salt concentration in their environment. The salt in strategy is employed by only few halophiles like Seleni, Bacter, and Helen aerobile, which requires potassium chloride for their proteins to function effectively. Microorganisms using the salt exclusion strategy can tolerate a broader range of salt concentrations since they are not reliant on specific ion concentrations. Water activity Water activity is a measure of availability of water in a solution. It's defined as a mole fraction of water in that solution. In saline environments, water activity can substantially lower due to the presence of dissolved salts. Even though salts can lower the freezing point of water, saturated salt solutions have significantly reduced water activity. Some microorganisms have developed the ability to regulate water activity through the production of specific metabolites. These metabolites, such as proteins and polysaccharides found in extracellular polymeric substances, can either store water or attract it, helping to maintain cellular hydration. Theoretical water activity minima for halophilic archaea and bacteria are typically around 0.611 water activity, while it's slightly higher at 0.632 water activity for fungus. To provide some context, NaCl saturated solutions have an estimated water activity of 0.755, while pure water has an water activity of 1. Temperature adaptations in extremophiles First, thermophiles. Thermophiles are microorganisms adapted to high temperature environments and have developed unique biomolecules that remain stable even at extreme heat. Their enzymes have often referred to as thermozymes are one of the key features that enable them to thrive in high temperature conditions. Thermozymes are catalytically active at elevated temperatures and are crucial for various metabolic reactions in thermophiles. One remarkable characteristic of thermozyme is that, despite their ability to function at high temperatures, they share substantially similarities with mesophilic enzymes. Mesophilic enzymes are functional within the typical temperature range of 25 to 35 degrees Celsius. The fact that thermozymes retain their functionality even when cloned into mesophiles suggests that genetic codes of thermophiles encode their thermophilic ability. These enzymes possess unique structural features such as salt bridges, extensive hydrogen bonding, and hydrophobic interactions that serve as stabilizing forces, allowing them to function at high temperatures. Next, temperature ranges. Earth's surface exhibits a wide range of temperatures, from an extreme cold of minus 98.6 degrees Celsius in places like Antarctica to the scorching heat of 495 degrees Celsius in deep sea hydrothermal vents influenced by magma. In the absence of geothermal or magmatic activity, the highest surface temperature reported on Earth is approximately 71 degrees Celsius found in the Lut Desert in Iran. The range of temperatures in which microbial life can survive spans from minus 25 degrees Celsius, exemplified by Dinococcus geothermalis, to 130 degrees Celsius as seen in Geogema pyrosis. While some extremophiles, like those thriving in hydrothermal vents, can endure ex exceptionally high temperatures, the upper limit for life may be around 150 degrees Celsius due to instability of macromolecules in higher temperatures. Similarly, thermodynamic considerations suggest that life might be unfeasible below 
minus 40 degrees Celsius, establishing the theoretical boundaries for life between minus 40 degree to 150 degrees Celsius. Next, sacrophiles. Sacrophiles, in contrast to thermophiles, are adapted to cold environments and can thrive at low temperatures. These microorganisms have developed specific adaptations that allow their enzymes to remain catalytically active despite the cold. The adaptation in sacrophilic enzymes provides structural flexibility, reducing the energy needed for activation and enabling them to function effectively at low temperatures. Notable features of these enzymes include reduced number of ion pairs, fewer interactions within subunits, cluster of glycine residues, and an acyble active site, all of which facilitates catalytic activity at low temperatures. Sacrophiles also have antifreeze proteins, which can bind to ice and lower its surface temperature. This enables microbial growth even in freezing conditions. In extremely cold environments, typically below minus 26 degrees Celsius to minus 10 degrees Celsius, microbial cells can become vertified without intracellular freezing, allowing them to survive in a non-crystalline strait. Adaptation Mechanisms Adaptations to extreme temperature often involves combination of other extreme conditions such as high salinity and pressure. In high saline, cold environments, halosacrophiles thrive due to the presence of sores that lower the freezing point of water, allowing for liquid water to exist at sub-zero temperatures. While halosacrophiles are adapted to high salinity and low temperatures, there are relatively few halothermophiles. These organisms can grow in a moderate temperature range, typically from 17 to 70 degrees Celsius, and have a wider salinity range of 2.9 to 29.2 percentage. Hyperthermopiezophilic microorganisms exemplified by Methanopyrus glandaris strain 116 are capable of maintaining their cell structural integrity in the presence of both high temperature and high pressure. This adaptation is crucial for microorganisms living near deep sea hydrothermal vents or in other extreme environments where these conditions coexist. Pressure Adaptation in Microorganisms Pressure Ranges Earth's surface pressure varies widely, ranging from 0 0.1 to 112 MPa. In specific geological settings like subduction zones, the pressure can be as high as 900 MPa, and subsurface environments often experience elevated pressures. Deep sea environments are particularly interesting for pressure adaptation studies. The average depth of the ocean is around 3,800 meters, resulting in an average pressure of 38 megapascals at these depths. Deep sea locations are home to piezophiles and piezotolerant microorganisms. Among them, Thermococcus piezophilus holds the record for surviving pressure up to 125 megapascals. Piezophiles have the remarkable ability to reproduce faster at higher pressures compared to atmospheric pressure. It's likely that many uncultured piezophiles exist in deep sea environments, including sacro piezophiles, which adapt to both pressure and cold conditions. Adaptation mechanisms To adapt to high pressure environments, Hyperpiezophiles make several adjustments, and one of the key adaptations is related to their cell membranes. They increase the fluidity of their cell membranes, often achieved by incorporating more unsaturated fatty acids into their membrane lipids. This increased fluidity allows the cell to function properly under high pressure. Microorganisms adapted to high pressure conditions may also upregulate chaperone encoding genes which help maintain proper protein folding and prevent denaturation under pressure. Some piezophiles use different porins, protein channels, in their membranes to facilitate the movement of molecules across the cell membrane. Additionally, some hyperpiezophiles produce osmolites or compatible solutes to help maintain cellular functions under high-pressure conditions. Low-pressure environments 
low pressure environments such as those found at high altitudes in mountain formation like the summit of mount everest 0.0033 megapascals have minimal direct impact on microbial survival this is because these pressures are not significantly different from the ambient atmospheric pressure at sea level in space conditions with near vacuum and extremely low pressures some prokaryotes fungi and lichen can survive by employing various strategies these strategies include the formation of biofilms or undergoing sporation biofilms are particularly effective as the top layers can protect the lower layers from the harsh space environment allowing microbial survival however Long exposure to space vacuum can have a detrimental effects including dehydration and DNA denaturation which can be harmful to microorganisms. This necessitates the use of pre-dried microbial spores or biofilms within protective substances during extended space exposure. Pressure effects on microbial communities. Pressure impacts on microbial community composition is most evident in deep sea environments. The unique combination of high pressure and other extreme factors in these environments shape microbial communities. Few studies have examined microbial diversity changes with increasing elevation. In mountain ecosystems, microbial diversity is influenced by a range of factors including temperature, UV radiation and nutrient ability. These factors often play more significant roles than changes in pressures. The Earth's atmosphere, despite pressure variations with elevation, is an ecosystem in its own right, facilitating the distribution of microorganisms. In cloud or fog, there can be a significant number of microorganisms, approximately 10 to the power of 2 to 10 to the power of 5 cells per milliliter. Despite various hazards like UVC and cosmic radiation, low temperature, desiccation, and oxidate. In response to these conditions, microorganisms employ strategies like sporulations, formation of spores, entering rest stages, and forming biofilms, all of which help them withstand the challenges presented by these atmospheric conditions. Radiation Adaptation in Microorganisms Types of Radiation Radiation encompasses various types including UV radiation, X-rays, gamma rays, and cosmic rays. Each type has its unique energy levels and can impact microbial cell in different ways. For example, UV radiation primarily damages DNA while gamma rays and X-rays have high energy and can penetrate deeper into the cells causing damage to multiple cellular components. Reactive oxygen species Reactive oxygen species are highly reactive molecules containing oxygen atoms. Reactive oxygen species can form within microbial cells upon exposure to radiation, particularly UV or gamma rays. These molecules can be detrimental to microorganisms as they cause damage to critical cellular components. For instance, reactive oxygen species can interact with and damage DNA, proteins, lipids, and RNA, leading to cellular dysfunction. Model Organism Dinococcus radiodurans Dinococcus radiodurans is often yielded as a model organism for studying radiation tolerance. This bacterium has an extraordinary ability to resist radiation with some strains capable of withstanding doses up to 30 kg of gamma radiation and intense UV radiation. Dinococcus radiodurans is particularly useful for studying radiation-resistant mechanisms due to its robust protection against DNA damage allowing researchers to explore DNA repair processes in extreme conditions. Radiation in Ecosystems Radiation is not limited to laboratory settings, but it is also a prevalent factor in natural ecosystems. It can originate from both natural and human-made sources. Ecosystems may be affected by radiation due to the presence of radioactive elements in the environment. For instance, there can be variations in radiation levels ranging from 0.5 becquerel per kilogram in re relatively clean areas like the Great Lakes region to much higher levels such as 109 becquerel per kilogram at highly contaminated sites like Hanford site in Richland, Washington. 
Natural radioactivity occurs in subsurface environments as a result of radiogenic isotopes such as 238 uranium, 232 thorium, and 40 potassium. This natural radioactivity can influence subsurface microbial communities and potentially support microbial productivity through radiolytic hydrogen production. Radiation and evolution. UV radiation has played a pivotal role in the evolution of life, particularly during the Archean era when the Earth's atmosphere lacked an ozone layer to shield against harmful UV radiation. The evolution of radiation-resistant mechanism was crucial for early microorganisms. During this time, microorganisms had to develop the necessary resistance to both UV and ionizing radiation to survive. Microorganisms developed a range of protective mechanisms including genome redundancy, multiple copies of essential genes, specialized DNA repair functions, a condensed nucleoid, the region containing the bacterial chromosome, the utilization of smaller amino acid to enhance protein resistant to radiation the accumulation of manganese 2 as a radio protective agent and the production of pigments that act as shields against radiation induced damage microbial adaptations microorganisms across the tree of life exhibit a range of adaptations to radiation allowing them to thrive in challenging environments Specific adaptations include the upregulation of proteins involved in DNA repair, replication and recombination. These proteins play a crucial role in repairing DNA damage caused by radiation. While radiation resistance is observed across different domains of life, including archaea, bacteria and eukarya, the precise origins and evolutionary pathways of these adaptations remain subjects of ongoing research and exploration. Lastly, fundamental and applied relevance of extremophiles enhancing phylogenetic studies. Extremophiles, as the name suggests, thrive in extreme conditions spanning a wide range of temperatures, pressures, pH levels and more. Within the tree of life, extremophiles are not limited to one domain but are found in all three domains: archaea, bacteria and eukaryotes. This diversity highlights the importance in the context of evolutionary and phylogenetic studies. Notably, archaea constitute a significant proportion of extremophiles and they have been often linked to ancient forms of life. Some extremophiles exhibit close genetic relationship with the universal ancestor of life. By studying these extremophiles, scientists can gain insight into early life on earth and understand the evolutionary processes that lead to the development of more diverse life forms providing clues about possible life in space the extremophilic nature of certain microorganisms has led scientists to consider them as models for extraterrestrial life extraterrestrial environments are often harsh and extremophiles offer clues as to how life could potentially thrive in such conditions Research efforts have been focused on identifying and isolating extremophiles in extreme environments on Earth that may be analogous to conditions on other planets. This includes areas like Yellowstone National Park where hot springs mimic hydrothermal vents on Mars, Antarctica where subglacial lakes resemble potential extraterrestrial subsurface habitats, and the Dead Sea which is extremely saline. Microbes like the archaeon methanopyrus and the microbes picrophilus which can endure high temperatures and extreme acidity respectively have earned attention as potential indicators of how life might adapt to survive on other terrestrial bodies recent discoveries in the atacama desert are particularly intriguing samples known as the red stone geologically similar to martian soil contain life forms that could not be precisely classified this raises the possibility that extremophiles on earth might provide clues about past or present life on mars and other planets polymerase chain reactions extremophiles have practical application in biotechnology a prominent example is the polymerase chain reaction a fundamental technique in molecular biology tag polymerase derived from the extremophile thermus aquaticus is a key enzyme in pcr it is valued for its ability to withstand the high temperatures required in pcr denaturation step 
PCR is a versatile tool used in various fields including medicine for diagnosing diseases, industrial biotechnology for genetic modification and genetics for studying DNA sequences. Extremophiles have made PCR a widely accessible and indispensable technique by providing the essential enzyme that makes it possible. And lastly, applications in industrial biotechnology. The practical applications of extremophiles extend to industrial biotechnology. Enzymes derived from extremophiles offer unique advantages compared to their mesophilic counterparts. For instance, proteolysin obtained from extremophile Coprothermobacter proteolyticus is an enzyme that can effectively operate over a broad pH range and at high temperatures. This versatility makes it an excellent candidate for bioremediation processes, especially in the breakdown of organic solid wastes. Extremophiles like the sacrophilic halorubrum lactose profundi provides enzymes such as beta galactosidase, which have special significance in industrial processes like oligosaccharide production. Furthermore, some extremophiles produce molecules with antibiotics, anti-cancer and antioxidant properties. Research and development efforts are underway to harness these compounds for commercial production, potentially offering new solutions in the fields of medicine and biotechnology. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Thank you so much.